Ocholi Okutepa. My wife as well. She came with her three children. See? <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm finishing pastor's time before my time starts. I can see. I, have, I don't change it. It was four minutes, 20 something seconds. Just give me. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. Your name. You are good. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your grace and forever to your name. You are Lord. You are light. You make everything. Kind. You are kind. I have never, I have 
Okay, ladies now, only ladies. Say neighbor. I don't need to carry human hair to be human. I got Jesus and I'm all right. Brothers, treat your neighbor. I don't need to wear designer to be all right because I am fashioned in the image and likeness of God himself. I got Jesus. I'm all right. I got Jesus. I'm all right. You guys have the best music groups in the world. They can just collect a song. My wife will tell you, we have gone to places, I raise the song. I quickly end it so that I can, so that I can just preach. <laughs> All right, if you want a song, it's uh, by David and Kenon. And uh, the story behind the song is that it was powerful. It was in a very tough moment of his life. And the Lord just sent that light to him. That you are good, you are kind, you make, I mean, you, um, I've never seen your kind. You are loved, you are light, you make everything all right. He just began to sing it like, ah. Lights came to him. And he just realized that he has a God bigger than the circumstances he was facing. Praise God. Clap for these people. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before we sit down, can we give a big God bless you to these people? Thank you so much. It's a lot, it's a lot when God commits this kind of assignment to people to labor over the souls of men. Praise God. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here, and um, the Lord will help us this morning. Please sit down, guys. <laughs> Praise God. You can see there's no note, there's no Bible. We're just going to gist. It's just that my gist can get hot. I can promise you that. I'm not boasting, I'm just telling. I'm a teacher by calling. I can teach. Praise God. One of my friends reached out to me. Are you saved? <laughs> he said, in this handy, why is it a sex part that is on your head? <laughs> he said, is the, is the, is the handy available? He said, why is it a sex part that is on your head? I said, what kind of problem is this? <laughs> I said, what kind of problem is this? <laughs> Praise God. Father, I receive the anointing to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand. Anoint the ears and hearts of my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate the revelation deeper than I communicate this morning. I ask that at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be making a conversation this morning that is relevant and instructive to the man and gives direction to the woman. When God speaks, everybody can benefit. So as he's instructing the man, the woman takes direction, all right, because men have to be involved in her life. So the conversation we'll make today, I, and I'm, I'll just say this for commencement, that the challenge of the believing man is not whether he will succeed, it's the kind of success he ends up in. To succeed is given. But there are two kinds of success he's contemplating and dealing with. Many years ago, very young man that I was, and the Lord dropped a word in my heart, hero zero. Men who are heroes on the earth, heralded in the nations, but who will show up in eternity, and God doesn't even know their name. Hero zeros. That's when I began to draw myself to certain kinds of revelation to watch it. Because it's easier to excel on earth than before Jehovah. That's what began to shape how I feel. I've been to places with my wife that I just said to her, I don't fit here. 
Everybody appears to think that the image of success is to arrive at this place. But all I struggled with tonight was this doesn't look like the environment I should be. So you attend a dinner, you attend a meeting, you attend a birthday, you attend a party, and you're standing right there and you see the decay of the earth. I have seen people with money in line who I do not admire. I've seen people with rank in line that I count for nothing. Let me say this to you. The men that God is raising in this age and time will be misunderstood. Some people will look at you at some point and wonder if you lack ambition. You don't lack ambition. You have a new ambition. Yes. The new realm. There are new species on the earth. Not so new, but a restoration of what was in the beginning. There is an order in which we walk. We're not men, men on the earth. Men, men walk the streets. They don't know what I'm talking about. So, we operate in that dimension. And I will show you from scripture, nothing new about what I'm saying. But as it were, when Paul began to speak about the mysteries that was concealed from them. We are falling that um, with such an apostolic call of God on they have reduced the calling of God. <laughs> then some people came by who thought we were in very conventional with how we thought because I'm going to run you through a lot of scriptures just trying to teach relationship marriage. And they're like, what is going on here? I'm like, that's what people need because 15 ways to keep a man has not kept men. I know people who have gone through re uh, fidelity recovery coaches and they are back to look for the word of God. Because when you are done with the coaching, <laughs> they, they, you don't easily coach a penis that is not soaked in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the anointing. It's not the stones. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise God. But I'm not started. Though. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there. <laughs> You know, I tell some people, you think you have a problem with loss, declare 40 days fast. Starve the body, let me see where it will erect. <laughs> You're not looking for dimensions. There are realms of glory. No, it's not realms of glory. You want to silence something. <laughs> Hunger has a way of solving temptation. You never chop your own look woman. But where <laughs> Genesis 126, I beg. <laughs> Scary people are making me feel at home. <laughs> Look at this. Genesis 126. <laughs> Glory to God. Ha! Hey. And God said, let us make man. Somebody say man. man. In our image after our likeness and let them. Somebody say them. Yeah. This is so powerful. The introduction of God to the creation of mankind had something to do with a pair. Let us make man and let them. You see that desire to be married in your heart. God desires your marriage before you started thinking of it. So when people meet me and they are talking about biological clock, I just laugh. God is more interested in you getting married than you are. And let them. That's not my focus this morning, but let's just go where I'm going to. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now, watch this. Man needs to understand what God defines as success for man. Before he went to dominion, he identified family. Watch it. Let us make man in our image and let them. My wife comes before my career. My wife comes before every single one of you I'm talking to this morning. So I'm not going to abandon my wife so that I can be a great apostle in the end time. It's a mark of foolishness. You know, I'm speaking to you like this. Very anointed people are sitting in front of me. Any oil that comes on you that damages the family 
is a misuse of the oil of God. God does not need the rubbles of your family as a raw material to build his kingdom. That's my first congregation. That's the first mark of a man. Let me say this to you. If you truly love your wife, men will call you woman rapper. They say, now that girl, the controller, I too. see my controller. If they have not said that about you and you have a babe or a wife, my brother, you are too stiff. And let them, the dominion mandate was committed to a pair, not to one. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them. This is what will make you understand Matthew 18, 19, where he says, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything, marriage is the hack for agreement. With that woman seated there, we can move anything without a corporate prayer in any church. And let them. So the mark of the man is to find the them that works. It's when you understand this kind of thing that you know you cannot abuse your wife because she's the factor that forms the quorum of the dem. This is where you learn to make peace quickly because the dem that forms the quorum of power is her. I give you malice. Some people are in a relationship for three years. If you check the malice timing, it's two and a half years. So they manage only six months out of three years. <laughs> Let's go back to Genesis. This is church. <laughs> Somebody say I came and did hit and run in their church before. That's why I'm not pastoring any church. <laughs> and I go and live with your pastor. Because there are people, they are just male, they are not men. And let them have dominion. Verse 27. Everything else was just the dominion mandate. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. This is where some people we call men stop. Male. I will show you how God transposed Adam to man. The kind of man we're talking about. Verse 28. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. God just did another one on us. He just did like this. Be fruitful. And said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it. God just introduced my children here. Them was established. He gave the instruction of dominion, and it looked like the fruitfulness was not mentioned. But when he came to the blessing, which is the empowerment to excel and succeed, he brought in the offspring. Malachi 2 says, I have brought them together because I desire godly seed. One of the greatest tools of evangelism in the end time is families that raise godly seeds. You know, people are out there trying to evangelize people when their house is in decay. Look at this man. That's why I tell people, fruitfulness is not a prayer point. It's a command we key into. So when I need fruitfulness, I go to him, excuse me, sir. You commanded it, now deliver it. So, who is my first congregation? Who is my next congregation? Before I come to your turn. That's why in the New Testament church, when they wanted to give you leadership, they asked for your family credentials. Can I see your family? Because if I can't do it at home, I can't do it here. If I fail in my primary assignment... Now, jump to Genesis 2, 15. Let us see the making of that man. Where's the making of that man? Ooh, 2, 15. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the Lord God took the man. Hey. He was male in verse 1. He now took the man. The first thing I will say to you here. Now watch this. And the Lord God took the man and put him. Who took him? He becomes a man when God can take him. Not the stiff one who pockets his hand and worship is going on. I say, let them move fast and go to the world. I came here for serious business. So we think, let me tell you a misconception in the body that we must correct. Oh, women are emotional. That's why they cry before the Lord. God has not touched you. And God touches you. Order your dark bow that you are doing. You will weep like a child. Because the move of God is not just an emotional thing. It's a spiritual reality that no flesh can stand before. And the Lord God took the man. What is the process of taking? In this generation of Jackpot, why are you leaving Nigeria? Who sent you? I joked a joke with some people this week that passed. If I drop one billion in your hand right now, just naira, not dollars, one billion. So people will leave their current job because their current job is just about to pay bills. The taking of God does not re regard those calculations of life. Where a man moves by conviction because Elohim said, and the Lord God took the man and put him. His placement is of God. God is the one that places him. Hey, Ocholi, are you saying we should not plan? Plan, but within the confines of your placement. That's why when they told me, by the way, I'm still in practice, in fact, I'm a managing partner of a law firm. Eh? When they told me that this calling is a distraction by no less a person than my father and others, my own father were born me, and he's extremely successful. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. Well, here's the deal. I don't fight you. I don't curse at you. I love and respect you. For well, by the grace of God, the oil on my life is not a distraction. And it means more to me than wearing wig and gown before any man. I still wear it. I make a lot of money from practice, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm not afraid to say it. I know I'm online. I know I'm on camera. But if one has to go, law can go because it has no eternal value. Can I attain anything I want to attain in life? Absolutely. Am I in pursuit of great things in the profession? By the way, did I tell you I'm a notary public? Did I tell you I have a master's in oil and gas from the University of Aberdeen, Scotland? Did I tell you that I have qualifications as um, a, an IP3 specialist, public private partnership, all the way from Washington, D.C., two institutes to be precise, uh, Institute of Public Private Partnership in uh, Washington, D.C., and International Law Institute? Did I tell you that? Okay. So we are not called because we are jobless. We are here because he took us. What's the mark of taking in your life as a man? Where's your taking? What are you taking into? Even if all you do is the profession you are in, what's the mark of God taking you? Are you everything, every other man is there? Or you are something else based on the taking of God? And put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. I've never had this conversation with you. But I believe that Bishop is not in Zaria because Zaria is the best place to be. So when we were in ABU, those were names that stood so strong in our mindsets as students who were looking towards the move of God happening right from the north. And you just wonder, what are you doing? Not even Kaduna, not even Kaduna, or just managed to be on Kaduna Road towards Abuja. Then, or maybe just use Thailand, just touch the boundaries of Abuja. Zaria. Taking. There's a taking. There's a taking that makes you define locations and not run from them. So Philip was taken from somewhere. There is a man going back to Africa. He doesn't even understand what he is reading. This is the day of the taking of the Lord. Where the Lord begins to interrupt the plans of men and call them here and higher. 
My wife's life is as sweet as the degree to which I am taking. Her security is in my taking. Now watch this. And I'm going to show you the parameters of taking. And this is where God formed the man, the man, the man. And put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Next verse. And the Lord God commanded the man. God doesn't take who he doesn't command. I have news for my generation. The grace gospel is the true gospel. But it's been misunderstood. Titus tells us that the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching them. Grace is a teacher. Any grace that doesn't teach will lead to disgrace. I'll give you a simple example. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. If I commit adultery today, Jesus' blood solved it. But somebody will hurt. If I just call you Pastor Bakari, ah, I'm leaving Julia. You will forgive me. The highest you do is not to talk to me for a few years. But you still be praying for me. For I've interrupted the taking. Don't misunderstand forgiveness for remaining in the past. I don't want to be in God's makeup plan to just mercifully get me forward. I want to be in the intention he has. And commanded him. This was not the law of Moses. It's not every book in the Old Testament that is Old Testament. He just found himself in that portion of the Bible. The law of Moses had not been given. He still gave a command with consequences. This man had never tested sin. There was still command with consequence. <laughs> and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Go on. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The man that God forms is the man who has boundaries. Without boundary, you are a wreck. There are temptations God does not want you to even approach. Every temptation we fell for, God didn't lead us through it and to it. Why? He's so faithful, he will not bring us to a temptation that he has not equipped us to overcome. So every time we fall, it means we didn't keep a boundary he kept. The way you like fine girls, God does not want you confined in Every girl is fine. Fair girls, I meant to say. You are yellow, you don't cooperate at all. God is doing everything to stop you, but you want to go and do movie in your house. Are you crazy? You just, mistakenly, you just move like this, just see fair tie. All the labor pastors will labor, you just whoosh. Abba. Boundary. <laughs> you know, people have been even accusing men of God like this, that you don't have anointing. No, you have anointing, you don't have boundary. Because the anointing functions within the confines of a boundary that God gave. This is it. So you received of the Lord from church and were to operate within a boundary you did not set. I would say flee temptation. Or flee every youthful loss. But because you watch the movie Fighting Temptation, you Benis has head of his own, but he doesn't think well. You're supposed to think for it. Ouch. Ouch. You want a fool to direct you. Do you get the description? A fool to direct you. That fool cannot direct you. Like the common saying, don't let your direction determine your direction. Commanded him. Next verse. And the Lord God said it is not good. The problem in today's world, now to you sisters, is that sisters are receiving and dating men that are not commandable. God finished the command before his name. At this stage, it's not good to be alone. 
before they command, it is good to be alone. Before the boundary lines are drawn, it is good to remain. If I don't even greet a sister. Do you understand where we're going? It's at this point he gave him the instruction. Why am I starting the conversation from this perspective? Everything he should become in life rests on the stability of this stage. So when you speak to men, they want to talk about being billionaires and mo- see, let me tell you the truth. If you don't understand what I'm saying, money in your hand is just your capacity to fund immorality and evil. You know, there are times you don't do babes because you are cash trapped. Cash trapped. Let me tell you a simple story. So a few days ago, you know, with the problem in Nigeria with fuel crisis right now, so I was on this fuel line and I got fuel. So I called my wife. It's long, but it's moving. And the integrity of the line is good. So she left office and joined the same queue. So when I was done, I got it for I went to the office. So she's like, these POS people are disturbing her. I said, get money because inside, I mean, they don't have cash machines. So get the money. She's not like a lady is particularly coming. Let her call her. I said, she's in red dress. Her name is Favor. She's from Imo State. My wife said, wait. If not that I trust you, what means this information? <laughs> I now said, calm down. She was knocking my glass at the window, and I said, you must be Igbo. She said, yes. What is your name? Favor. Which state? Imo. That is how I know. Of course, she wasn't serious, but I was taking her serious. I now said, baby, but wait. At my stage in life, there's a class of temptation. That's not my class. That, that's not my class. What happens when you can afford your class? Command. Hmm, the men are getting uncomfortable. You know that car you have been planning to buy? <laughs> it will ask you to visit the person you have not been able to visit because both will embarrass you. You know when you receive capacity to punch it? A girl has been complaining she doesn't have rent. Just two fifty, three hundred thousand. But your entire contribution is seven thousand. It's not, it's not okay. <laughs> then you now land in this money you are pursuing. You receive one, one alert. Just enter your phone. Twenty million. Elege sita. Hello, Joan. I just punched in 750000 to your account. Just pay your rent for two years. Keep the change. The next thing, you just see one love kissing emoji. Oh, you yeah, are the best thing that happened in Abuja and your head is spinning. Mumu. <laughs> Mumu. Hi. Hey. <laughs> the person where before now all those joints under batch of Abuja. Now they buy <laughs> with or without. <laughs> we now be cruising to have dinner at the Hilton. Then you know, Equence will now plant one daughter <laughs> on the road. Her, her dress will stop here. You will see the class of pie you are talking about. You will see human hair like it was growing for my own head. Now, like the fixer. You see, bling bling. Have you ever been in a situation where you are the temptation of your own temptation? It's not like the temptation is tempting. You are tempting your temptation. And everything you say, ah, it's just a lift. It's not just a lift. Lift of man. <laughs> At this point, you can afford it. Only the command of Elohim can keep us. When the day comes that we can afford the things that will kill us. Babe, I'm going to Dubai on a business trip. And you can afford a carry-on bag. I'm going to conference. And you can have conference material. 
Success is not your problem. Good success is the contention. Success that I have testimony with. Codedly. So rich you can pay for adjoining rooms in hotel. Nobody saw you together because you used a door between rooms. Things are happening on earth. I didn't come to spoil you. I'm just talking truth. Capacity to afford things. Just like somebody traveled to a country, my dear brother, and met a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria playing anyhow at the lobby of hotel with a girl because he was so away, he felt so safe. Lobby. He didn't, he didn't even manage the entire room. But when he comes here, convoy, he goes, ah, honorable. He sat in lobby looking for something that was not lost on the chest of somebody. What happens in the day God wants to build the capacity of the man? Let me say this to you. I just watched a story yesterday. It was on news in the U.S. This grandmother needed to buy stuff and she went online. And, you know, she got chairs and uh, furniture from a family. Apparently, the family had lost, like, their father or so and needed to give out furniture just to, you know, keep the memory away. And the woman just felt one of the sofas so hard. So she unzipped it. And uncovered thirty six thousand dollars. She called the family to take their money because the family did not even know. Apparently, their father had been saving, keeping money away for years. They interviewed the woman. Oh, I love Nigerian people. A Nigerian grandmother. She said, "God has blessed her life." She wasn't talking about money. She said, "Look at her children. They are doing well." Look at her grandchildren. She was holding two of them. She was so emphatic that it was her fate. That's what the command does for you. That's what the command does for you. Success is not your problem. Go to a good school. Go to an MBA. Go and learn all the lessons, including the ones you have been taught in church. You would succeed when it comes to earthly things. But the infrastructure of good success is the command on which I run. Let me say this to you. Nigerians have left criticizing delegates to wishing they were delegates. Let's not pretend. Because I know that $5,000 or $50,000 means something good to your bank account right now. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have a lot of righteous people in Nigeria who are only righteous because opportunity has not come to steal. Let me indict everybody here. If they just give some people in your life ministerial appointment, you join the Thanksgiving. What are you thanking God for? For the work or the connection? Our brother. Even some of the uncles we are blamed. Why are we blaming them? He's my uncle. He's not helping me. Is he your God? You're my father. Sustainer. My source. Will never run dry. Noella. My father. My source. My sustainer. Matthew chapter 6. I'll show you something. Billionaires are here. But let me give you a foundation of our billions. Men who would think the things I'm saying are the men that God will use. We're not just going to be big. We're going to be relevant to heaven. Matthew 6. 19. <laughs> you lay not up treasures for yourself upon the earth where moth and rot doth corrupt it can be corrupted and where thieves break through and steal Jesus was the one speaking I'm not cursing anybody that thieves will steal their stuff but he said that's the possibility of the earth next verse but lay up treasures for yourself in heaven where neither moth nor rot doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal next verse for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We are going to have money, but money won't have us. That's the point. That's the man that God is raising. Next verse. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. No time to explain all of this. Next verse. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is your darkness? Ah! He just spoke about a believer. He just spoke about a believer. He said, how come the desires of success in you does not stand on the right foundation? Next verse. 
No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. This is why some people who did campus fellowships with you are no longer in the faith because it was just convenient because they were students. But when life hits, we move. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Before we continue, mammon is anything that makes you give up your conscience, your faith, and family for the sake of money. Anything that makes you give up your conscience, your faith, and your family for money. Next verse. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. Hey, God, my Lord, stay there, stay there. I'm going to show you something here. I am not responsible for how I eat, feed, and clothe. It's not my job. It's not my place. God took it from me. How? When I say that, some people say, this is irresponsible. I'm going to repeat to you. You know, the reason I'm saying this is that a lot of men have pierced themselves with many sorrows because they think they are responsible for their life and for their family. Therefore, I say to you, it's not your business what thought for your life, what you eat, what you drink, not for your body, what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Let me explain. God is in charge of my sustenance. I am responsible for multiplication. There are two different things. If you are a businessman here, I tell you the truth. God did not put the responsibility of the capital on you. That's why when he gave out talents... He did not come back and ask them, why didn't you find the talent? No, he gave them the talent. He demanded the multiplication from them. When you understand this, you know how to petition God as a man. You see this family he gave me. I followed the pattern of Adam to challenge him. He made provision before he brought the woman. Who made the provision? Did he tell Adam, as woman don't come now, hustle something. God, give me this kind of busy. I should be suffering. Look at that woman. Can I take her over? Me. That's where Jesus will say, there's nothing I've, I have that I've not received. This is my portal of receiving. When I look at those three children, <laughs> kindly come and be responsible. You said I should take no thought. Why? The reason you have a lot of bad husbands around is that they are dying in anxiety and worry. Hello, brother, gaba, gaba. You cannot be romantic when you are not cantic. Hello, brother, shidebra. Abuja rent want to drown me. But you say, take no thought. Ayala, bro, sebada. You are my exceeding great reward. Liba, babo, shadagaria. Ibandaragaba does it mean I don't work? I go to office. Ibrondo sukopalada ya yender of the gosuto prada. You did not make me a useless lawyer. Clients must come and his clients that pay. Not all those friends that say, "Boy, look at this agreement for me." Moro suto bro shatala katsuta ebra da baba ba. Lord, your rent is due where I live. Makosoko poto shekaya. My father, my father, your store is empty in my house. My wife's shoes keep cutting because Nigeria is terrible. You say I should take no thought what I will wear, how we will clothe, what we will eat. School fees is coming. September is here. One don't enter secondary school. Another one don't follow. Can't you people slow down? Lord, it's time to pay school fees. You say I should take no thought. Worry is worship of mammon. Lord, you are so wicked. Lord, you are terrible. You just bring me to Abuja to come as well. Lord, you are dangerous. My God, you are horrible. This I will die. When your account is empty, sleep well. Forward your account statement to God. 
If you don't know how to do it, just save a number on your phone. Zero, zero, zero. Just mark it God. <laughs> send a text. <laughs> just send a text. Say, Father, rent is due. <laughs> Men are dying because they don't know where to put the pressure. Put pressure on God, not men. <laughs> Take no thought. Next verse. I'll show you scripture. <laughs> Behold the fowls of the earth. They neither sow nor reap. Neither nor gather into bands. Let me say this to you. Sowing and reaping is investment. Gathering into bands is like a fixed deposit account. All right, yet your heavenly father. Now, watch these words. He spoke about the fowls of the air, but identified the person that caters for them not as their father, but your father. In essence, God cannot be responsible to birds and irresponsible to his child. So he said, Look at the birds, I take care of them, and the identity of the person that caters for them is your father. I know our earthly fathers did it. Now he's outside and horrible at home. Not God. If men don't understand this, the weight of life will kill them. Rent is enough to give people sickness that they, God did not give them. That's why men are dying. But when you speak to them like this, they say, give me 50 ways to make money. I'm giving you a billion ways to stay relevant in God and man. Because when he supplies, I give you the story of a colleague I don't know him personally, but the story is true. So a friend of his called him in this city. Come and take minutes. My friends are doing a meeting. He went there. He took minutes very well. Broke lawyer, not even car. Took minutes. Because when the orchestrations of God begins, and he has a well-placed man, <laughs> money is not the problem. He took minutes, sir. Later on, they sent him a message to send his account number. He saw a lot. You know, you can move from worry to wondering. He could not sleep. 50 million. Then they said that the professionalism with which he took the minutes and how he comported himself, they were actually starting a company and they were giving him 1% equity. God can make you anything in one second. It's not the making that is his problem. It's how are you going there. There's a man in the Bible, you may have read of him. His name is Joseph. Becoming prime minister was not the issue. It was to run from a woman who was not worthy to stand near the wife he married. Men who choose wife, not women. Men whose penis is not community for community service. The making is not the problem. It is the pathway that God is taking the man through to get him to the point. There's more disgrace in the body today because the men God have called did not go with a certain character. So they can't even leave their own homes. I say this with every sense of responsibility. I was speaking to somebody within the week God has tried to God has shielded men, listen God has shielded the body from more scandals than are available not for the sake of the men he shielded but because every scandal is a multiplied weakness in the body God is working over time shielding scandals but you know what it has made us foolishly think if God can still protect me no, he's not doing it for you. He's doing it for around 1 to 50 million men in Nigeria who are seeking his name, who your story will make feel it. That man of God can do it. I beg, give me. I think I'll just go. So God is looking for examples. I remember one day we were in a conference and my pastor said, you know, thank God you don't know the name of my church if you know it's your business. So that it doesn't look like his church I came to advertise. When he said in that conference, by the grace of God, then they were like 23 years married. Um, uh, these 23 years I've not been unfaithful to my wife. I paint all the men around me. I say, how many years you don't gather? How many years you don't gather? God, yeah. I mean so boldly. 
as in, there are some tough principles. Oh my God, my generation needs to learn from people like that. My pastor, if you like, be stranded on the road and rain is beating you, give you transport. He can't be in a car with only one woman. Never, ever, ever. He cannot cancel you. Ah, I told my wife when I was reading ethics of Christian life and ministry and blah, 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 my pastor. I stopped halfway. I couldn't continue. I said, Pastor, you have closed my ministry because me, I used to cancel sisters because I don't even know what to do. Like, it looked like Old Testament, but God wants to raise men. You know, this generation is full of flash, 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 flash. I'm not criticizing the glory that has to come out of here, but there's a glory that is not smoke. I'm not criticizing that glory. This, this is another realm of glory. But there's a glory that is not smoke. It's any generation where they are giving me 50 minutes to teach me. 50 minutes. You came to church. You want to go and eat pizza? By 11.30 is a lie. The highest that happen, you not invite me again. And I know your pastor, you still invite me. What they'll simply do next time is to write a long letter. Please. <laughs> Najoko. Verse, verse 27. Let me, be, let me begin to attempt. Hey! Did you add that four minutes from pastor that time? You added it, okay. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? Next verse. And why take your thought from raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Give another example. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Next verse. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Men, listen. So let me do something to make it easy. Let's read scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, message translation, please. I'll read about three scriptures, three of them or so. Talking to the man. The scriptures I'll read now will touch different aspects of the man, <clears throat> which I, I wouldn't take a lot of time to explain today. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, from verse 22, message translation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Hala bara shuzelita. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shabara kasubara tashke. Olebra do sindoro koskida. These are men who will arise and Satan cannot snatch from them. People who admire marriage, they don't know the contentions in it. He will come for your wife. He will come for your children. <laughs> Wise, well, understand. Verse 23, 23. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The husband provides leadership to his wife. The way Christ does to the church. Not by domineering, but by cherishing. Next verse. So just as the church submits to Christ, as he exercises such leadership, time will fail me to explain this. The man has a default instruction. The woman appears to have a default instruction, but the instruction is hinged on his leadership. We loved him because he first loved us. The best point of submission for my wife is when I love her into submission. Submission by itself is hard. A good man makes it desirable. Wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Next verse. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Next verse. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. How can I be in this place and ever speak to my wife in a nonsense way? Whoever is controlling this time is born again. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. I am my wife's washing machine. Some translation puts it that he washes the church with the washing of water by the word and presents the church to himself without spot or wrinkle. My wife doesn't have a right to present herself to me. I arrange the runway, pick the dress, 
arrange the person, tell her to take a walk. So you see men complain, your wife added with, who has been sleeping with her? Who gave her three children? What's wrong with your head? Do you have sense? You have the guts to compare her to a woman outside. The foolishness that is worrying you, you don't understand. See the dimension of the foolishness. Number one, if it's a single girl, her father is doing a good job. It's not your job. Number two, if it's somebody's wife, the husband is doing a good job. Your attack on your wife is a criticism on your work. Antino Vex, stand up. That's my report card. If this woman is happy, it's my report card. If she is sad, it's my report card. If you think she is fine, no, this is actually level one of seven levels. We just started the journey. Pepe never rests, you understand? When Pepe rests, when my wife walks in, you will touch the ground. You are the object of my affection. You are the plan I have till I breathe my last. I have you figured out. I have a plan for every year. Pepe, we rest. Sit down. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. If your wife is just being a Christian wife, you are failing. You know what I mean? Endurance trek. Next verse. Dressing her in white, in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. Next verse. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They are really doing themselves a favor. If my wife is happy, I'm made. Simple. This is the infrastructure of my success. Some people can't go home. I go home well. I go home to accolades of glory. Hi. This morning, you were just telling me, see my husband. Hey. Hey. My head was just growing. Pala, pala. Say, it. baby. I was just pretending I was not here. I was hearing him. I was just for me busy in my mind. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it, say it, say it. All the married men, stand up. Thank you. Bring out your phones. If it's off, on it. If you don't have your wife's account number, it's a shame. Shamefully ask for it. Transfer something now. All the committed boyfriends, stand up. Committed boyfriends, stand up. Relationship in your life, pause the time. This is an exercise. Pause my time. Committed boyfriends, stand up. If you don't have the account number, shamefully ask for it. Even if it's one case, send it now. No network problem. I clear the network problems. Every network problem is cleared right now. Send it, send it, send it. One minute, just one minute, send it. If it's GTB, it's star 737. Send it now. And the wives, if you are here, once you enter, shout praise the Lord. Girlfriends, once it enters, shout praise the Lord. Right here. Glory to God. Labrador, This kingdom is practical. If you are believing God for a girlfriend, stand up, send it to one girl. <laughs> While they are doing that, go to First Corinthians 7 message translation. Go there already so that we don't have any. Pastor, you don't send them. You should never shout praise the Lord. <laughs> it has come. <laughs> I bet Pastor sit down. Please, please, please. Hey, First Corinthians 7 message translation. Don't sit down until you send it. Network can keep you up. I've not heard praise the Lord. You're sitting there. I've been there. No day house. <laughs> Network. Tell her in her ears what you are sending. Today. Oh, she's not. Today you will send it. <laughs> Quickly, let's touch, let's touch a scripture on sex, for example. Now, watch this. Some people network is keeping their standing. <laughs> now, getting down to the question you asked in your letter to me. First, it is a good thing to have sexual relations. No, be me talking. Now, Bible talk. It's a good thing to have. Now, come back to me, please. It's a good thing to have sexual relations. Next verse. Certainly, but only within a. Aha! Lega, 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 lega. 
brother. Glory. All right. Paul begins to answer. Say, but ah, souls have been saved today. Souls have been saved today. Ah. If I <laughs> glory. Can we continue now? <laughs> Certainly, but only within a certain context. It is a good thing for a man to have a wife. A somebody say a, a. not them wife. Say a. a to have a wife, and for a woman to have a husband. Say a, a. sexual drives are strong. Pastor, one day now. We just gather the couples. Sex. The way they say that hand be sex, they my head. They my head. Where, where? Today is just, I will just read the scripture. You know, Paul began to answer this question to tell singles, just hold on. Your own is to pray for grace to contain. He says, sexual drives are strong. So for that person asking, yeah, my husband wants it every day. Don't you eat every day? Some of you ate breakfast this morning, self. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Forever. Sexual dress are strong. But marriage is strong enough to contain them. If any of you is complaining that they cannot contain it, they have not found the revelation. But marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in the world of sexual disorder. It's so clear. <laughs> it's not today that the world got into sexual disorder. Next verse. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. Let me tell you what the husband must do in bed. The husband, not trying to come, seeking to satisfy the wife. This is his responsibility in bed. Satisfaction in bed is a harvest you take for giving satisfaction. The wife, seeking to satisfy her husband, none of them came for themselves. But both of them are living satisfied. Before we move on, this is not boyfriend. This is not fiancé. This is not we just got close. Hoss. 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 This is not the choir band. Hoss. Hoss. Let me not come and break TV. Hoss. Wife, not babe. We fair. We, we fair. It's not if fair. Eh? Is there any fair in this show? Why do you say it? We, we fair. Say after me. We fair. Wife. We fair. Wife. Not side chick. Not side something. We fair. Not we kill. We fair. Next verse. I must keep to this time. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the order, whether in bed or out of bed.